Hello everyone, I am Precious and in this class we're going to look at the concept of fractions, decimals and approximations. So we look at how to carry out mixed operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication and division on fractions, how to count numbers on, in decimals and how to do their operations also and how to approximate numbers to significant figures and decimal places. These are keywords for this lesson. Alright, so what is a fraction? This is just a kind of a revision. And so we know that a fraction is actually a part of a whole. So when you say 1 out of 3, and so another way to write that is to put it in a fraction. That's 1 all over 3. And so the one you have up is called the numerator, while the one you have down is called the denominator. We have types of fractions. We have improper fractions where the numerator is bigger than the denominator. You have a proper fraction, the opposite. You have a mixed number where you have a whole number part and a fractional part and all of that. Okay, so basically we are going to be looking at the operations, you know, involved in a fraction. So how do we do addition, subtraction, multiplication and division? And so here we have a combination of addition and subtraction. It says we should simplify this. Alright, so we begin by first of all turning this into improper fractions. You recall that it is improper fractions that lead to mixed numbers. Okay, so what do we do? You use the denominator to multiply the whole number, then add your numerator, and whatever you get, you divide it by the denominator, and that gives you the improper fraction. So 4 times 5 is 20, plus 3 is 23 over 4, and this is uh, 12 plus 1, 13 over 2. And so after you've done that, the next thing is to look for the LCM of the denominators, and for this we have 12. So you use the denominator, 3 into 12 is 4. 4 times 28 is 112. 4 into this is 3. 3 times this is 6, 9. 2 into this is 12. Sorry, 6. 6 times 13 is 78. And then you do this simplification. You will get 108 all over 12, which will give you 9. Alright, so that's how to simplify for addition and subtraction. You look for the LCM. And so, what if you have multiplication and division? What do you do? Basically, first of all, change the mixed numbers to improper fractions. And here will lead us to 9 over 4. This will lead us to 7 over 2. And here will lead us to 35 all over 8. And whenever you have a division, it's always advised to change it to multiplication. And when you do that, the next fraction following it, change the invert. It turns to its reciprocal. Reciprocal means denominator becomes the numerator. And the numerator becomes the denominator, and that's why we have this. And then after that, you try to simplify. Of course, you can see here that uh, 8, 2 can divide here to give us 4, and this 4 can divide this 4, and so we have 1 here. And then under here, 7 can go away here. 7 here is 5, and so that's how finally, if you multiply all here, you get 9, and then this place will give you 4, sorry, 5, and that will give us one whole number, 4 all over 5. Right, so the next example here also mixed operations. This one contains subtraction, division, and uh, uh, addition. And then you have brackets. So you recall that what guides everything we do here. So we have what we call board mass. So that means bracket comes first of division, multiplication, addition, and then subtraction. Okay, so whichever one, if you have a mixture of all of them, so you have to take it according to this order. All right, so here we have brackets, two brackets. So first of all, simplify what we have in the bracket. So if we do that, here we are going to have, this is going to give us 61 over 8, 3 over 2. This one will give us 19 over 4, and this will give us uh, 39 over 8. And so here, if you look for LCM here, it is 8. So this will divide this to give us 1. 1 times 61 is 61. This will divide this to give us 4. 4 times 3 is 12. And so we are done with this bracket. We come over here. LCM is also 8. 4 into 8 is 2. 2 times this is 38. And this will give us 39. So you simplify this first. And this minus this will give us 49 over 8. And this plus this will give us 77. And like what I said earlier on, you change the division to multiplication on this one or uh, turns upside down and so here we now simplify 8 will cancel 8 here and 7 here is 7 7 here is 11 and so you have 7 all over 11 
Now we have another example here, also a mixture of addition, multiplication, and subtraction. Now applying our board mass, among these three operations, the one that comes first is the M, which is multiplication. So the implication is that we are going to first of all simplify this. And when we are done simplifying it, then we we'll now take addition next, then before subtraction. All right, so what do we do now? So we first of all change this to improper fraction, which is 7 over 3. And then under that, um, in this particular 2 now, 3 will cancel 3. And so we'll have only 7 over 4 left. And then at this point, we can take everything together actually by finding the LCM, which is 4. This will give you 2 times 3 is 6. 4 here is 1, 1 times 7 is 7, 2 here is 2 times 1 is 2. Remember, I'm always bringing down the sign. So at this point, you simplify what you have here. This plus this is 13, minus 2 is 11, and 11 over 4 is 2 whole number, 3 all over 4. All right, so the next one we have here is uh, a very important question. We talks about arrangement of fractions in order of increasing magnitude or decreasing. So, and to do that, you should be able to identify which one is the greatest and which one is the smallest. So, and that's why this question is coming. Another way they can ask this question is arrange this in ascending order or descending order. And so to identify which one is greatest, the simple thing you need to do is to find the LCM of the denominators. And when you do that, use it to multiply each of the fractions. And when you do it, you are going to get, you know, a single whole number. I'm going to multiply 7 over 9 by 36, which is the LCM. And I have 28. I multiply 3 over 4 by the same 36. I'll get 27. I'll also multiply 11 over 12 by 36, and I'll get 33. And so you can see of these three numbers, the greatest is 33. Therefore, the fraction that gave this number is the greatest fraction. And so we have that 11 over 12 is the greatest among these three. And so we go over to decimals. Okay, and so how do we evaluate decimals? So just like what we did there, we have addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of decimals. How do we do that? So look at this one. You arrange them the normal way we arrange our addition and subtraction. So we begin here. You can actually attach zero here if you want. It's important to note that... Uh, it's important to note that you arrange this according to their place values. Assuming you have a, a whole number, you know that uh, you will usually start this 8 here. That this is decimal point, sorry, decimal number. So you always start arranging from the decimal point. So every digit after the decimal point will be under the same line and so on and so forth. Okay, so from here now, 0 plus 9. Remember, you're adding the first two and then you subtract the last one. 0 plus 9 is 9, minus 5 is 4. This plus this is 10, minus 0 is 10. So we write 0, carry 1. So we take the 1 to this place. 1 plus this is 8, plus 4 is 12. 12 minus 2 is also 10, 0, carry 1. And 1 plus 6 is 7, 14. 14 minus 8 is 6. And so we have every other thing here is 0. And that is our solution for that. And so the next example here, a combination of multiplication and subtraction. And he's asking us to do this. So what do we do? You first of all take care of the bracket. Remember your board mass. So I'm going to do this subtraction. And if you do this, you will get this. Now what do we then do for the multiplication? Look at what I did here. Now to multiply decimal numbers, the easiest thing to do is first of all, remove the decimal point. And when you remove it, count the number of decimal places you have. So if I remove the decimal point here, I have two DP, that's two decimal places. And how do you get that? The number of digits you have after the decimal point, and that is two. And then for this one, I have how many? Three. So I have three DP here. Don't mind this zero here. And so the total DP, since I am doing multiplication, I will add the DP. So the total decimal places you have is five. So the next thing to do is to multiply this. And when you do this multiplication, you get 24,000. Remember, you have 5 DP. And so you are going to bring back this 5 DP after you've done this multiplication. The essence of this is to allow you to do this multiplication with ease. And so you now bring back the 5 DP. And how do you do that? You will start from the front of the last digit and move the number of five, uh, DP you have backwards. So since I have 5 DP, I'm going to move 5 times. 
and that's going to give me one i'll have two i'll have three four five and so wherever i stop becomes the position of my decimal point and so this is going to give me 0.24 and so i will cover it with a zero in front and that's how we got this 0 0.24 assuming i moved let's take it for instance that what i have is let's say 24 and i have 4 dp so that means i'll need to move four times that's going to give me one two three four and so your decimal point will be here and the empty spaces you will fill with zeros so and that's just why i needed to bring this and so the next example says we should evaluate this this one is division now so all i need to do is also use that approach of dp so our first of all is a combination of multiplication and division so our first of all change this to whole numbers and so i have two dp here i have one dp if you add the two i'll get three and then in the denominator i have three dp and that is this so now for division you are going to subtract so i will do three dp minus three dp that will give me zero so that means when I divide, I multiply and divide, I am not going to uh, move anywhere because I already have 0 dp. And so this is going to give me 135. Assuming I had maybe 5 dp here, if I said 5 minus 3, that will give me 2. That means after getting this answer, I will move 1, 2 places. And so my answer would have been 1.35. But because I have 0 dp, there won't be any movement. And this is my solution. And so finally, we look at approximation. How do you approximate? And you know approximation comes in uh, two basic ways that we wanted to look at that significant figures and the decimal places. But now you can also talk about nearest 10, nearest 100 and all of that. So let's look at that. So to approximate in decimal places, all you need to do is uh, um, identify the decimal place where you want to get to and then approximate using the next digit to get your solution so these are the examples we have and we want to look at solution and so this one says we should approximate this to two decimal places and so the second decimal place here is four and so i'm going to make use of the next digit which is one to do the approximation so what am i going to do i'll ask myself is one now up to five if it's up to five i'll round it up to one and then add it to this next digit but since it's not up to five i am going to round it down and that means it will become zero so i'm going to add zero here and so my solution here is uh, 33.04 uh, and always remember to put what you approximated in bracket so our approximation is to the uh, to two decimal places and then the next one to four decimal places so i'll count one two three four so I'm going to use the next digit, which is 5. Of course, it is up to 5. So I'm going to round it up and then call it 1 and add it to this. So that will give me 1. So I'll have 0 0.0101 to 4 decimal places. Next example is significant figures. Recall that significant figures, it talks about the first non-zero digit in that number. And so if you look at this number, the first non-zero digit is 2. And that means this is the first significant figure. So we have how many significant figures here? Four. Now, but they are asking us to approximate to three. That means I'll count one, two, three. And then I'm going to use the next digit to do the approximation. And so this is not up to five, so I'll add zero. And so that's why we have this. And then the next example says to five significant figures. Now, remember I said the first uh, non-zero digit so the first digit here is non-zero so that means this is the uh, first significant figure so you count one two three four five remember that after the first non-zero any other zero after it is significant please take note of that so this zero is significant and then i have one two and that is five so i'm going to make use of six and six is up to five so i'm going to add one so when I add 1 to this, it's going to give me 10, and I'll take 1 here. That's 10 again. I'll take 1 here, and that's why we have uh, this 100. Zero, zero. So recall I said that these two zeros here are actually significant. We look at how to carry out mixed operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division on fractions, how to count numbers in decimals, and how to do the operations also.
and how to approximate numbers to significant figures and decimal places. These are keywords for this lesson.